Hello, my name is Rena Lyons and I'm a senior lecturer in the School of Health Sciences. And today I'm going to talk to you about three programs we offer in our school, the BSc in Occupational Therapy, the BSc in Podiatric Medicine and the BSc in Speech and Language Therapy. So what do these professions have in common? So all three professions are part of a grouping called Health and Social Care Professions. And they're actually the second largest clinical grouping of the healthcare workforce in Ireland. They provide interventions in therapeutic, rehabilitation, health and social care and diagnostic services. These three professions work in all settings, including acute settings, so in hospitals, in community, in disability, specialist, mental health, primary care, residential and services for older persons. They all work as part of a multidisciplinary team with other members of the um, healthcare profession. So, for example, with um, doctors and with nurses and social workers, psychologists, etc. Health and social care professions are highly qualified and skilled and play a significant role in the health, well-being and quality of life of the population across the life cycle. And all of these professions work with um, children right through from little babies right through to older people. So right across the professions. What do the programmes have in common? Well, each of the programmes has a strong theoretical and practical component. And in NUIG, we provide a supportive learning environment where you can learn how to apply theory to practice. We focus on evidence-based practice and teamwork to prepare you to work as part of a multidisciplinary team in the health services. You will have an opportunity to conduct research in your final year. All of the programmes are fully accredited by the regulatory body and professional bodies, and we have a really strong record of graduate employment. So I'm going to start with the BSc in Occupational Therapy. So what is Occupational Therapy? So occupation is about the activities that we do every day and that are important to us and that we enjoy and that contribute to our society. So let's think about the things that you enjoy doing. And what if you couldn't do these things anymore because of a physical illness, mental illness or an injury? What if you were born with a disability or into circumstances that would prevent you from living life to the full? Would you like to work with a premature infant, a child with a developmental delay, a person with a mental health problem, a young person recovering from an accident, an older person with dementia, a person recovering from a stroke, or an adult with an intellectual disability or other communities experiencing social exclusion, such as homelessness? Well, what occupational therapists do is that they assess um, individuals um, and there can be a disruption to activities and participation that can occur as a result of any of these problems. So occupational therapists will do an assessment to see what that disruption is. They will also design interventions um, to enable that person to reach their goals. So that might involve changing the environment, changing some aspect of the person or changing the task. And the goal is to improve participation in daily life occupations. So what are the modules that you might study on the BSc in Occupational Therapy? So there are subjects about how the body and mind work. So for example, anatomy, physiology and psychology. There are also subjects that are applied to occupational therapy in theory. So for example, there will be specialist modules in neurology, intellectual disability, physical disability, paediatrics, mental health and older adults. There are also modules on social policy and community engagement and modules on research. And there are also modules on practice education or work placement. So what about placements? So placements are a really important part of the program. And the aim is that you will develop professional competence through these placements and you will experience the future work environment that you're going to be working in. And they'll also help you to link theory to practice. There are 33 weeks in total um, which are spread of placements that are spread out across the four years of the programme. All placements are supervised and assessed by an experienced occupational therapist and you must pass all of the placements in order to gain professional qualification. The placement will take place anywhere in Ireland and there are some options for doing your placement abroad. So for example in the UK, India, Canada, Australia and Dubai. In terms of graduate employment, currently we have graduates from occupational therapy working in Ireland, but also um, in international contexts. So, for example, in the UK, USA, Canada, Australia, Singapore, just to name a few. The next programme I'm going to talk to you about is the BSc in Podiatric Medicine. So what is podiatric medicine? So podiatric medicine is a specialised healthcare profession dedicated to the diagnosis, treatment and prevention of diseases and disorders affecting the foot, ankle and the lower limb. 
So what can it offer you? Well, it can offer you an opportunity to specialise in the foot and lower limb, a chance to work as part of a multidisciplinary healthcare team offering your specialist knowledge, the ability to confidently assess, diagnose and manage conditions autonomously and help improve people's quality of life. And it's a practical hands-on career with scope for further professional development. And it's a varied and challenging job. So what's the scope of practice? Podiatrists work in a range of different areas of specialization. So, for example, in the area of musculoskeletal function and biomechanics. So they may work with people with sports injuries and podopediatrics, which would be for children who have who need a podiatry. They also work with high risk um, populations. So, for example, people with vascular disease, diabetes. They work in the areas of wound care and rheumatology. And they also work in the area of minor surgery and specifically foot and ankle surgery. So what kinds of modules are on the programme? This is just a sample of some of the modules that you might study if you were doing a BSc in podiatric medicine. So podiatric dermatology, um, human body structure and function, microbiology, endocrinology, professional development, you also do research methods, redefining health and well-being, and podiatric sports medicine. And what about placements in podiatric medicine? Well, there are over 1,000 hours of clinical placements that take place throughout the four years of the programme. The majority of placements take place in a dedicated clinical facility in Merlin Park Hospital. So there are those placements will be local, but there are also national placements in other centres and hospitals around the country. We also offer some international placements um, and also an opportunity to, to participate in some multidisciplinary placements. So, for example, in vascular clinics, orthopaedic clinics, diabetes clinics and also in the voluntary sector. Graduate employment is very good um, and our graduates um, have been successful in getting um, employment in private practice, in the public health service like the HSE and the NHS, in footwear companies, orthotic companies, sports clubs, research, postgraduate studies and some have also taken up um, careers in education where they're teaching future podiatrists. The third program I'm going to talk to you about today is the BSc in Speech and Language Therapy. So what is speech and language therapy? So speech and language therapists are responsible for the assessment, diagnosis and management of people with communication and swallowing disorders. And speech and language therapists enable people with communication and swallowing disorders to achieve their maximum potential to communicate. And this may involve direct work with the individual and or indirect work with the family or carer. So for example, intervention may help the individual to communicate their message better, but also working with carers, families, teachers, um, who to enable them to communicate differently to enable full participation for the person with the communication disability. There are lots of different types of communication disorders. So for example, some people who have difficulty with speech, which is producing speech sounds, some people have difficulties with language, so finding it hard to find the right words to use, difficulties putting words together to form sentences, difficulties understanding what words mean. Some people have difficulties with voice, so that's at the level of the vocal cords, so they are hoarse um, and cannot um, project their voice very well. Some people have communication difficulties where their speech and language skills are strong, but they have difficulties interacting in social contexts with other people. And speech and language therapists also work with people with swallowing disorders because the function of the larynx is actually to protect the airway. So when the larynx is compromised, swallowing um, may be a problem and people may aspirate. So speech and language therapists work in the area of swallowing or dysphagia as well. Communication disorders may be developmental, so children may have them, um, or they may be acquired as a result of head and neck cancer um, or stroke. So who do speech and language therapists work with? Well, speech and language therapists work with people with neurological conditions like stroke, motor neuron disease, MS um, or cerebral palsy. They also work with people with sensory disability, for example, hearing impairments, and with people with developmental disabilities like autism, intellectual disability, cleft palate, and with babies, neonates who have feeding difficulties, with people with mental health disorders, and also head and neck cancer. What kind of modules would you study if you were doing a BSc in speech and language therapy? Well, there are theory modules, human body structure and function, neuroanatomy and physiology, psychology, linguistics, which is the study of language, phonetics, which is the study of sounds, communication and swallowing impairments, professional studies and research methods. And what about placements? So like the other two programs we've talked about, clinical placements take place in each year of the program. 
There's an on-site clinic at NUI Galway where students will do some of their placements. Some placements are one day weekly and some are block placements. And during placement, students gain experience assessing, diagnosing and treating people with communication and swallowing disorders. And again, with children and adults across a range of settings. And what about jobs? Um, so there's a very good um, employment prospects um, with the BSc in speech and language therapy and our graduates are working in a range of clinical settings in Ireland, the UK and Australia. So that would be hospitals, rehabilitation centres, community prevention programmes, etc. So are any of these courses for you? Well, if you're thinking about one of these careers, um, what qualities would you need? Well, you need to be a people person because you're going to be working with people. You need good communication skills. You need to have an inquiring mind and a problem solver because every client or patient that you meet is going to be different. And it's your job and your responsibility to work with that patient and client to find what the difficulties are and try and find solutions that will enable them to reach their maximum capacities. You need to be a team player because we need to work as part of a team. You need to be interested in science subjects. You need to be able to use your initiative. And you also need to be an innovative. You need to be innovative and also an original thinker. Thank you very much.